Skyrioke ecosystems, they're a really special ecosystem and we like to call them an eco-cultural landscape. Eco meaning ecological and cultural because of their long-standing significance to the Coast Salish First Nations. The Coast Salish First Nations coexisted with Gary Oak ecosystems for thousands of years. We can think of them really as Coast Salish gardens. It's a very unique ecosystem in Canada. There's literally over 900 species of plants and so it's a very biodiverse ecosystem. Unfortunately, here on southern Vancouver Island, there's only 5% remaining of the original range of Gary Oak ecosystems. Um, and that has a lot to do with forestry practices, with conversion of meadowlands to agriculture, with the fact that it's a very lovely place to live, so people like to build their houses here, and also because there's a lot of invasive species. So what we wanted to do here was create one acre of Gary Oak habitat. What you see here is a typical mix for a Gary Oak ecosystem. Uh, we've got lots of, uh, this yellow stuff here is all buttercup. Um, blue camas, you can see some pink sea blush back there. Those are sort of the dominant iconic species of the Gary Oak Meadows. And then there's a, probably about 50 other species that we have in here too. Everything has a very strong connection, but they also have a use. So there's so many things. There's food resources here. There's tool making resources here. It's a home for many things as well. They're all important as far as making sure the whole system thrives. I refer to it as a food system. So everything needs each other to fully thrive. And it needs us too. We're a part of that uh, food system. When I started with this project, this acre here that you see, which is full of wildflowers now, was just a lawn. The first few years were was just about building up the soil. Mostly everything inside the meadow was, was planted, starting with the big shrubs and then moving on to the grasses and uh, flowering plants. The work that's going on um, now we're sort of we're sort of uh, evolving away or beyond the, the common species and, and towards more the, the rare species. A lot of the species that were identified in the recovery strategies. Volunteers have always been a huge part of the success of this program. Um, they've helped do everything from plant the actual plants into the ground to mulching everything, making sure the ground was prepared. It's amazing to see what can be done in an area that was just lawn. So this whole area used to be just grass and now it's this diverse ecosystem that's attracting so many other species to it. They're all coming into this meadow because there's so much food, so much shelter, so, so much diversity here. So it's really neat to see nature coming back. Coming in here, you see the urgent need of having to make sure that this is here for future generations. and. Development is the hugest impact, of course, to a lot of the old ecosystems. There's very few places you can find them, and they're very fragmented when you find them. So having these in place shows people they can do this in their backyard. It's knowledge that's important to pass on to, to create awareness and um, to show it's really in an urgent state that we need to be protecting, but also reinstating a lot of these very, very important food systems. So if you want to come and learn about nature or conservation in action, Parks Canada's Gary Oak Learning Meadow at Fort Rod Hill has something for everyone and it's definitely worth a visit.